Hello everyone, I'm Adam Brown and this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, July 7th. On today's show, Willie Demarest of Royal Bonnet explains to us why she's been wearing a bionic looking arm attachment and leg brace lately. And we'll recap this past weekend's 4th of July birthday bash that took place right here at Shell Point. But first, we want to remind you of the anniversary sale that is going on at the Community Thrift Store now through July 11th. All during this celebration week, select clothing will be marked down to an incredible price of only $1. Wow, sounds like it's time for me to go shopping. Don't miss the opportunity to win some great raffle prizes, sweet treats, and more. All happening right now at the Community Thrift Store on McGregor Boulevard. Also, keep in mind that the Cafe Promenade at the Woodlands is now closed until August 24th. So anytime you need a quick snack, refreshment, breakfast, or even a full meal, you can still head out to the Island Cafe. And yes, that is on the island. They're open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. 777, that's easy to remember. This past weekend, residents enjoyed food, fun, and games at the 4th of July celebration held at the Village Church Auditorium. Here's a recap of all the festivities. <laughs>
One of our residents here at Shell Point has been sporting some fancy hardware lately. No, it's not jewelry or clothing, but she has been wearing a futuristic looking gadget on her arm. Shell Point resident Willie Demarest of Royal Bonnet calls it her bionic arm, although we didn't see her bending steel or picking up heavy objects with it. She's gotten a lot of curious looks and questions lately about why she's wearing such a device, as well as a leg brace. It turns out that Willie survived a pretty nasty fall, but not to worry, this athletic superwoman is bouncing back to a full recovery. Here's Willie to explain. Well, I've always been an athlete, and I was walking to my car, and I, my toe hit a speed bump that cars walk, run over, not one of the bumpers, and I was airborne, and I landed on my elbow, my head and nose, and this knee, the good knee. And um, they sent me, of course, to the hospital and did CAT scans on both my elbow, my head, nose, and uh, my, this knee. And everything proved okay on my head and my knee, but this was shattered, absolutely shattered. And I asked for Dr. Markovich because I knew he was the arm doctor in the area, but he was away at a seminar. So I said, well, do something. You know, I'll take any, any surgeon because I'm sitting there in Lee Memorial waiting for something and nobody would do the operation when they saw the CAT scan. It was like a bomb went off. And when he came back from the seminar on a Thursday night, he operated Friday night, Dr. Markovich. I thank God and Dr. Markovich that I have a right arm. I am right-handed. And he said if I had broken it further this way and further this way, it would have been amputation and I'm right-handed and I'm a swimmer. So I thank God and Dr. Markovich that I have a right arm. Um, they put this, I had surgery on the Friday the 13th of February, it was two months in the pavilion. And when I went to the pavilion from the hospital, Dr. Dave uh, Nesselrod in charge of the pavilion said, Willie, you're a first. I've never ever dealt with a replaced elbow. It's a metal elbow. And in 30 years, almost 30 years of practice, they've never had one at the pavilion. So this was new to surgery. This was, I mean, uh, doctors, nurses, and therapy. They've never dealt with this. So I'm a baseline unit <laughs> for them for future references for broken, I mean, shattered elbow. After the surgery, the original surgery, I was in the pavilion for two whole months. I mean, I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't. I could with the left hand. Now I even still prefer eating with my left hand because it's hard to get up to my mouth. Um, it's wonderful to have been here for two months and just taken care of. I couldn't dress myself. I couldn't wash myself. You know, a shower. Um, two months, they took excellent care of me. And I've worn this ever since the surgery. I've had two surgeries on this elbow. And there's a metal in this ulna and in the humerus and a metal elbow. I love it because it protects me. 
I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm, I take it off sometimes in the kitchen, but I shouldn't because when I'm wearing it and I bang it, I'm thinking, oh my golly, I'm so glad I wore my brace because, you know, I could have really injured it. And it's two surgeries. I mean, it, I don't know if you can see, there's a scab under there. And I didn't want to go in the water till all the scabs were off. I finally couldn't stand it anymore. That scab was so hard to get off. So I'm in the water five days now. Love it. Oh, just love it. I missed it. And the knee um, is really kind of recent. I, three years ago, I had a replacement. One year ago, I had a revision of that replacement by Dr. Humbert. And I saw him maybe two weeks ago, and he took out two whole syringes of blood from my knee because I'm on Coumadin. So he stopped the Coumadin for a week. He said, no more Coumadin for a week and put me on this immobilizer. He does not want me to bend that knee. I said, what about therapy? He said, oh, no, no, no. That would be the worst thing you could do right now. I want no blood in that knee. So that's why I'm in the immobilizer. But I am a swimmer. I just started swimming four days ago, five days ago. This will be my fifth day. And I can do the crawl, but I can't reach all the way. This is as far as I can bend this elbow so far. I'm working at it and therapy's pulling it and pushing it, which is the most painful. And I've got exercises to start doing at home. So I think my therapy will be over at the end of this week. But I'm swimming for four days, I love it. I'm, I'm supposed to keep it stiff and not bend the knee. So I try to keep it stiff if I don't wear this. For instance, I will go in the pool today. Uh, I swim with straight legs. I swim from the hip. So I'm really not bending that knee. I make sure I don't. I used to be able to do a length of the pool in 27 strokes. Now it takes me 40 strokes. And I'm really pushing, you know, pulling hard with my good arm and I'm reaching as far as I can and pulling and kicking hard as I can. And it's 40 strokes, but I'll get there. It's so good for you. And I remember attending a lecture um, about the water. And if you get into water up to your shoulder, above your shoulders, up to your neck, you're really, even if you don't move, the water is exercising your lungs, your heart. All this is so good for us to get in the water. Even if we just stand there, we're exercising the inner workings that are so important to us. So I think I'd encourage people to get active. Oh my goodness, yes. And Shell Point's very much into that. Heather is really good at that. And of course, we've got our great gals that exercise us. And I, I, I'm gonna work out in the workout room on the machines. There's about five machines that I use. So I'm just gonna keep working at it. I'm just so thankful that I have an arm, a right arm. I'm thinking next to your head, what's more important than your right arm if you're right-handed? Absolutely. Yeah. There's so much here for us, so much to participate in and be thankful for, and I am. I'm very thankful for Shell Point. And now it's time for all the latest happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Welcome to the Happenings segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Caitlin Van Scoy, and we're going to go over the activities that we're going to offer for you here today at Shell Point. We have an early class today, Health Connections, Bend, Breathe, and Balance in the Health Club, and that starts at 7.15. 8 o'clock, pickleball will be played at the pickleball court. Round robin doubles tennis will be down at the Woodlands at 8 o'clock. And at 8.15, to find the stamp ministry in the stamp room down in the tunnel. At 8.30, the Ladies Golf Association will be meeting at the Shell Point Golf Club. We move to 9.15, where the caregiver support group therapy session will be at the conference room of the medical center. You do need to sign up for that one. And at 9.15, the memory care group will be in the conference room of behavioral health. Open painting in the, will be in the art studio at 9.15. And then we have shuffleboard also at the shuffleboard courts at 9.15. At 9.30, we have match play mixed doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 10 o'clock, our Suzy Q will be going to Woody's Waterfront Restaurant on Pine Island. You do need to sign up for those trips. At 10.15, Through the Bible Bible Study Group will be in the Osprey Room. At 10.30, we have the Caregiver Support Group Therapy Session in the Conference Room of the Medical Center. 
And at 10.30, we have the memory care group in the conference room of behavioral health. LifeQuest Living Healthy will be in the Osprey room on the island at 11.45. And that concludes our morning. Here's Caitlin for your afternoon activities. Thanks, Bev. At 12.30, we have mixed progressive bridge in the game room of the Woodlands. And at 1 o'clock, we have a health connections class, fitness room orientation. That's in the health club. And you do need to sign up for that one. The knitters group will be in the Osprey room at 1.15. And then also at 1.15, the rollicking recorderists will gather in the tarpon room. Our last 115 activity is Women's Ministries Prayer in the Hospitality Room of the Village Church. We have a Health Connections class at 1.30, Aqua Pilates Stretch, that'll be at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. The Stamp Ministry will gather in the Sable Room at the Woodlands at 1.30. And at 2.45, another Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2 in the Health Club, and you do need to sign up for that. Our last Tuesday activity is our hymn sing at 645. That'll be in the Resident Activity Center. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Koleth with your Academy information for Tuesday, July 7th. At 830 in the morning, we start pick up on the island for all aboard Lakes Park Railroad Museum and train ride. At 10 o'clock, Rise and Fall of the Ottomans begins in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands and you can sign up right at the door. At 10.15, bring your questions to the iPad, iPhone, walk-in clinic in the Manatee Room on the island. Tomorrow, we start our July Bridge classes, Intermediate Bridge. Menus for Tuesday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is a turkey and bacon melt flatbread with potato salad and broccoli. And the soup of the day is chicken and white bean chili. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a trio salad on a bed of lettuce with sliced tomato for $7.75. The dinner special is your choice of a hot dog or a burger with a side salad, watermelon, and ice cream for $8.75. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are halibut for $16.95 or chicken brine for $13.95. Um, menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Dottie Morrison. Welcome to Village Church Connection. I'm here with Nita DeWeese in the Village Church Library, and I'm here to talk about all the wonderful things you can find for your summer reading. Nita, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. And we have over how many books and media pieces we here? We have 4,400 books. We have 46 CDs and 300 and some DVDs. That's pretty amazing. And that's pretty good for a small library. <laughs> no kidding. So Nita, I was wanting to ask you, what's popular nowadays with people checking things out from the library? There is a lot of interest in end times oh, and the prophecy. The future, what might happen in what the future? What might be happening might at the, the end of time and okay. all that sort of thing, which are of course all fiction. Okay. And one of the most popular authors in that category is um, Joel Rosenberg. Right. And his yeah. latest third target is, uh, it, when you read it, it just makes you think that you just saw that on TV yesterday. Okay. He is very, very up to date. And you have his books, but I bet they're checked out yes, frequently. Yes, they're very frequently. We have I, quite a few. Can I put my name on hold? Absolutely. You can okay. put it on and we will get it to you as soon as it comes back in. Okay. Here, what are these authors that mm -hmm. are also... This is author is uh, Grant Jeffrey okay. and Angela Hunt, and it mm -hmm. is a called Millennial Series. All right. And there again, it talks about the end times Mm -hmm. and a very, very popular book. Okay, okay. Yes. What if I like historical fiction? Do you have We have, have historical, we have romance, we have... Um, Cultural, like Amish? Amish, yes, we oh. have contemporary. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I pulled a few off okay. the shelf that I could sell just by the uh, books were uh -huh. series. What's this series like? This is uh, by Julie Klassen. She's very popular and she is more of a romance type uh, writer okay. Okay. than, um, for instance, versus a, a variety right. of, of okay. this type. But in a historical setting or contemporary? Uh, I believe contemporary. Contemporary, okay, all right. And this is looks like a more edgy author. Right, Brandolin um, is more of the, um, I think she's got mystery in hers. Oh right, a lot of mystery. And mystery. Yeah. Uh -huh. And contemporary setting. Contemporary. Okay, and then And this Marta series? Perry is, um, I think she is the Amish Yes, this lady. is an Amish, right. right. And right. we have several uh, authors who yeah. have 
nothing but Amish. We yeah. have a lot of Amish, and they're very popular. It's fascinating how we're how we people so many people are interested in the Amish culture. They are, and uh, so I have noticed that a number of authors have a series in a Amish series in authors, and we do have most of them. Okay, and of course, I think it's interesting. I personally am not interested in, <clears throat> excuse me, in historical romance, mm -hmm. but those people that are mm -hmm. usually have been to that area and because the story oh, is written in an setting. area that's familiar sure. to them they sure. really yes. think that's fantastic yes. okay so, but we manage to, to service almost everybody's likes okay and of course you also have so many nonfiction and reference books right and biography a lot my mother loves biography biography we have a lot, a lot of those, of those we too. try to keep that as current yeah. as possible yeah. we do get donations uh, to the library and we of course have a budget uh, and we buy quite a few books to keep everybody up okay. to date, Okay. Um, especially the series because people are just waiting for the next book to come. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a cart behind me that we usually put our new arrivals on so that when oh. you first come into the library you don't have to say what's new, it's right there. Oh, that's good. And then like after that. they've been there for about a month, then we'll put them back on the shelf where they belong okay. after everybody's had a chance to look at them. Okay. Well, thanks so much for sharing some of um, <clears throat> your favorites and some of the favorites of other people. Right. And I'll have to come by and check something out. You will, out. because reading is a fantastic pastime. It is. And we also have a very small amount of kids' things, children's oh, good. Uh, DVDs and books. Okay. So when the grandkids show up, yes. you've got something to do with them. I'll have to come over. All right. And my granddaughter's coming. All right. <laughs> that would be perfect. You're open 9 to 11 and 1 to 3. Every day of the week, including Saturday. Okay. And then on Sunday, you're open just before the morning service. Right. And at 4 to 6. And then in 4 the to 6 in the evening. Uh -huh. And then you're also open on Wednesday right before the Wednesday evening service, at so 5 to 5 7. 5 to 7. Absolutely. Okay. Very we good. try to accommodate everybody. We're closed on the uh, holidays and on concert days. Okay. And we have a return box outside All right. in case you want to bring a book back and we don't happen to be open, but you and, can call us. And I can check it out for more than two weeks. I Absolutely. mean, you don't have a limit. No. And I know from personal experience, if it gets on the shelf and I forget about it, after about a month, you do send a reminder. We do send out a reminder. <laughs> and uh, if it's something that is uh, on a wait list, we will remind you of that, but mainly right. just to let you know, do you still have our book? Sure. And if you don't, yeah. we want to know that. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting us come today. You are very welcome. Come back. Okay. Hope to see you in the library soon. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Be sure to return tomorrow when we will meet a resident who recently celebrated her 100th birthday among her entire family. It was quite a birthday reunion. And we'll get you prepared in the event of a hurricane by showing you how to assemble a hurricane kit. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Tuesday, July 7th. I'm Adam Brown, and on behalf of the entire SPTV staff, we wish you a wonderful day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.